<laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to get myself all situated this Friday morning. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and welcome to Full Circle with Joyce. My name is Joyce Amundiwa-Higa. Really hoping you are well this morning and excited <laughs> for the brand new, uh, for Friday, really, and for the weekend that is up ahead. Karibuni sana again. This is Full Circle with Joyce. And, uh, of course, this Friday being Style and Culture Friday, we want to talk about the Black Albinism Photo Challenge. My guest in studio is going to be telling us his story and why he also began this challenge. In addition, we're going to talk about some quick makeup tips you can use when you're running late in the morning. Ladies, I know so many of us catch ourselves in this situation where but you still need to look presentable for wherever you're going. We're going to be giving you some tips for how you can do that very quickly in the morning. In addition, we're going to have our personality joining us in studio. She's going to be sharing her music. She goes by the name Helena Ken. Of course, many of you would know her music and we're going to be hearing her story here on the show this morning. But of course, here is your inspirational word for the day. It says, attract what you expect, reflect what you desire, become what you respect and mirror what you admire. Hmm, let's read that again. Attract what you expect, reflect what you desire, become what you respect and mirror what you admire. You know what? I think that is beautiful as it is and I really don't have anything else to add to it and so with that said we're gonna get started with the show this morning kicking us off we have Jabi D and he's gonna get us you know dancing and moving so Karibu Nisana this is Full Circle with Joyce let's get started
All right, guys. Well, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Again, this is Style and Culture Friday as we get ready to wrap up the week and get ready for the weekend. Thank you to all of you who've been tuning in and have been a part of our show since the very beginning. That's on Monday. By the way, if you've watched the show, Kila Siku Kutoka Monday, niambia tu hapo kwa comments. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. Pia na tazanipata hapo Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. Please do let me know. I'd be more than happy to give you a shout out. Nomsi danganye, niambia ukweli. Kaume watch Kutoka Monday. I'd love to give you a shout out on the show this morning and of course you can continue sending in your feedback as we discuss uh, all of this, the, the different topics that we have lined up for you today. To begin with we want to talk about the Black Albinism Photo Challenge and joining me on the show I have Alan Herbert who's the founder of Black Albinism Initiative. Karibu sana to the show. Yeah good to see you here. So you're the reigning Mr. Disability Kenya in the albinism category and the first runners up for Mr. Albinism East Africa as well. I mean, you must be pretty passionate about this matter and in, even in just stepping out, competing, getting your message across. I am more than uh, passionate. I yeah. think uh, uh, passionate is, n is underrating it. Yeah. yeah, I'm very passionate about it. It's just that I did not work with my associate to stamp yeah. it that uh, I am indeed the reigning Mr. Disability Kenya. Okay. Yeah. How was it, by the way, going through the the you know competitions? Is it nerve wracking? Uh, the competitions, uh, first uh, the Mr. and Mr. Albinism in East Africa. It was like it was the first ever. It uh -huh. was very nerve wracking, and uh, I was doing modeling for the very first time. Yeah. It's not that I I knew anything about modeling. Yeah. So cracking it in two weeks quite a challenge oh wow two yeah. weeks wow very interesting well it's good to have you here and you now have something called the black albinism photo challenge which is an, a unique way to look at albinism is that is that correct yeah tell us more about what that is uh the photo challenge we are doing it to celebrate the international the upcoming international albinism awareness day mm -hmm. i believe there is a lot of inclusivity that has happened since people started advocating for albinism mm -hmm. uh, i would take the history back for about a decade a lot has happened and uh, i believe it's high time we celebrate it because okay. we are not we are not where we used to be right. a lot has changed and uh, we need to recognize that what are some of the things that have changed then that you really want to celebrate in the last decade? Uh, these, uh, I, will, I will give an example. In 2008-2009, uh, you would hear a number of brutal murders here and there in Tanzania. You would hear some in, in Malawi, Uganda. You would hear funny, funny cases yeah. like all over the news. Uh, persons with albinism disappeared because of ABCD, but now it is down. It's, it's not that high mm -hmm. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Kitambo, the rates of employment were quite down. Uh, intake in education, school ed schooling, it was quite down. But now people are embracing mm -hmm. the condition and people are like, okay, these are people, these are, these are people like us. Absolutely. We need to give them an opportunity. And the opportunities are laid out there. And now those opportunities, we want to showcase them through photography. Okay. Yeah. So why is it with photography? Are you a photographer? Is that another passion of yours? Uh, <laughs> why I'm, did you set to learn <laughs> on photography? I'm a journalist okay. as well. I'm a journalist. And uh, there is a unit called photojournalism. Yeah. The first thing we're told in photojournalism is uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you want to tell a long lasting story, you need to use photography. Mm -hmm. I would look at a good photo for over and over and over again than reading an article. So yeah. the best way to document all this is through photography. Okay. Yeah. So when, how, how does the challenge actually work? Who is it open to? You know, can anyone take part? How does it work? Uh, the challenge uh, is open to everybody because we are celebrating inclusivity. We yeah. are taken to be different in the society. So we are included in the society. So we cannot take the challenge ourselves. Right. So, that, so we, the, the society is supposed to take the challenge with us. So this is the criteria. Now the way we are seated here, you know, you don't live with albinism, I live with albinism. This is what we want to showcase out there mm -hmm. to the world. But now in a number of settings, the education setting, health setting, lifestyle, arts, sports, all these things that people perceive that persons living with albinism uh, cannot do. Right. I remember when I was still in primary school, 
I the teachers were like, uh uh-uh, uh, how was you put your Zampira? And I was like, Manze, I can do this. Yeah. And right now it's happening. Persons with Albanism are getting involved in a number of things. Yeah. So that's what we really want to capture. Okay. Yeah. And um in addition to inclusivity and that being the message of this particular photo challenge, what are some of the You've talked about the strides that have already been made in the last 10 years. Yeah. What are some of the loopholes that are still there? What are some of the things that you want to see moving forward? Some of the loopholes, uh, uh, the legislations have been, have been put in place, mm -hmm. but uh, they have not been yet followed down to the core. I think it's a process. It's still going on, but uh, we would like to see the affirmative action on the 5% uh, employment bill passed by parliament mm -hmm. we would like to see it implemented even more than the rates it is it it is at right now would like uh, i i was speaking to a parent recently about a month ago and uh, she told me her kids were denied access to a school wow. because uh, they lived with the albinism these are things we we really need to wipe out right. in the society we need zero tolerance to such to such matters yeah yeah if you're just joining us, I'm talking to Alan Herbert, who's the founder of the Black Albinism Initiative. Uh, he's putting together a Black Albinism Photo Challenge. And uh, as he's mentioned, it's open to everyone. You can all take part. But in addition to that, we are taking your feedback on our SMS line, which is double two triple nine. You can also reach us on our social media platforms. That's at Switch TV KE on Instagram and at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook and Twitter. You can also tweet me at Joyce Omondia and I'd be happy to read your feedback right there. Um, so double two triple nine again is the SMS line and also on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. So when you look back at um, say your life, right? Um, living with albinism, what are some of the things that have really, really stood out for you? What gives you strength today? What gives me strength? I would like, first and foremost, I would like to appreciate the community that I grew in. I realized that I had albinism when uh, at, a, at a more advanced age, mm -hmm. I was, I think, I think I was 20. Hmm. That's when I, okay, it dawned down to me, okay, you're quite different in, mm -hmm. this, in this society. In the kind of society I grew in, they never painted it in my face yeah. that you're this different from us. And uh, to push that, I was, I, I, I moved crowds in the society because to Kicheza Pale Nyumbani, a game could not go on if Alan was not there. Wow. Now, for all young kids growing out there with albinism, it's the same message. It's the same. We want to create the same community mm -hmm. for them so that they do not feel less of themselves. Because mm -hmm. once you start feeling less of yourself, there is no way you're getting, you're mm -hmm. getting out of that stage because the brain starts, func starts uh, picking perspectives right. at a very tender age yeah so when you are shown that you're different at such a tender age it will take a lot of work sure. to totally wipe it out absolutely your mindset absolutely yeah. you know what i feel like i need to give you a chance like we're here on national television right now and uh, this is the chance for you to actually speak not just to people living with albinism yeah. but to everybody else even as far as this community you're trying to build and even just addressing things with them and just saying you know what this has been wrong this is what we need to do is that okay with you? I want to give you that chance right now just to kind of talk to everybody who's watching. I'm going to point you to this camera right here. Okay. Yeah, and just say something briefly to them. Okay. Uh, whoever is watching back there at home, I would like to say we are not different. It's just that we live in a white skin, but we are black. And uh, if you have never asked somebody a question, have you ever been discriminated against? Rather, focus that question on yourself. Have I ever discriminated against anybody? Because mm. being different in a community is very hard and everybody has their issues. We understand, yeah. but challenges in life, yeah. nobody is supposed to go, th nobody is supposed to face it hard in their yeah. life. Yeah. If you know anybody who lives there with albinism or anybody, not even albinism alone, anybody who goes through any challenge, just give them a listening ear because when you realize even the society you are in, they are not willing to listen. 
in the first place. It's quite uh, nerve-wracking. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. I really love that, actually. And uh, that. <laughs> I would like a little bit, I yeah. would like to call on to anybody who would like to take on the challenge. Yeah. Because we have a number of people who have agreed to take on the challenge with us. Okay. We have, uh, we have what are they called? Shape Fitness Family. They're taking the challenge with us. We have uh, Bagai Collection, who is a fashion designer, is taking the challenge with us. We have, uh, we will be launching on the, 30, on the 31st of uh, this month at a primary school in Tena Estate. They have okay. agreed to take the challenge with us. So if you're watching and you would like to take the challenge with us, just reach us on our social media pages. That's on Instagram, it's black underscore albinism. Or you can tweet us at black albinism or find us on our Facebook page at black albinism. Great. I think a great word right there that, you know, sometimes you look at it and you say, you know, maybe it's not about you being discriminated against all the time, but actually questioning and probing yourself. Are you being the one who's discriminating against other people? With that said, Alan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your insights and all the best with the photo challenge thank and uh, with everything else. Asante Sanam. All right, guys, with that said, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, ladies, we have a treat for you this Style and Culture Friday. I know many of us, you know, you know, things are just a mess and you have a place to go to. Or even in the evening, you can have a place to go to. Hey, my friends, we're going to deal with that today. <laughs> Show you a quick tip on how you can get your makeup done very quickly in just a bit. Stay tuned. Who's the next guest? There's a lot of people here. Hi, is it you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you? Are you mic'd up? Okay. He's not mic'd yet. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble. Look at me just walking around. Nanani? Aliona? Remember to explain what you're doing? Sure. One minute, where's my guest? Here I am. Hi. Thank you. Here. Are we good on sound check? Ryo. For sound check, please state your name and uh, what you do. Um, my name is Joseph Kenyo.
All right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce with me, Joyce Amundi Bahiga, this Friday as we focus in on style and culture. And uh, at this point, we want to make your makeup routine just a little bit easier in the mornings. OK, maybe you're off in a rush typically or you just don't even want too much to do to your face. You want something light and simple. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, how to do a quick makeup um, look. And so joining me on the studio in the studio, I have Joseph Kinwa Kamau of Uncle Kin Makeup. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about makeup. Sure. Does the amount of makeup that I can, obviously the amount of things that I can do will depend on the amount of time that mm. I have, or you think you can actually get a pretty sweet face beat even in a short amount of time? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can do a whole makeup depending with your uh, time. Uh, then, um, well, I don't know what I can say, but it depends. Mm. Yeah, it depends. Okay. So, can someone do a whole face of makeup in like, say, five minutes? Yes. The whole face? Yes, you can do. What about one minute? Uh, even a minute, but you one minute, something. you can do something, of course. Maybe not a full face, but not something at least you yes, can walk out looking nice. Of course, nice. then you look good. Okay. Um, so, you know, most of the times, mornings are difficult for a lot of people. Sure. <laughs> so we end up waking up late, then you're running late. You still have to shower, dress up. Um, and so I don't know if you've noticed, but like ladies will carry their makeup and either in traffic will be doing their makeup or in the parking lot just before they go into the office. Sure. So... You know, what are some of the basics as far as what someone can do just to look nice in the morning? Uh, well, um, things like products you need uh, when you are doing makeup, you need uh, foundation, not foundation, but to start with primer. Because primer, if I can talk about primer, primer is base. Well, actually, in Afakua, the foundation. The primer, um, you know, do beba makeup yote kind of. Then from there you go to foundation. So you you need to have like five products or okay. maximum six, seven there. Okay. One primer, foundation, mascara to set your lashes, and of course um, a lip color and uh, eyeshadow, just kidogo. What if someone doesn't want to do foundation? I don't think you can do makeup with without foundation. Yeah, you can. People do it all the really? time. Yeah. Then you, you can, can do it with uh, with the concealer. You can but, conceal under your eyes. But concealer and foundation, they work the same. Yeah, but yeah. if someone doesn't want to paint it all over their face. <laughs> well, uh, you can use concealer and uh, and setting powder. Mm -hmm. So that too can work. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, because mm -hmm. I mean, some people prefer a very natural look, right? And they sure. just don't want the fuss. But beyond the fuss of uh, putting on the foundation, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, including myself, struggle with uh, my hands. You know, I'll be touching my face and then I touch things <laughs> and then my clothes are all messy. <laughs> so sometimes sure. I think just, you know, conceal under my eye. I'll just conceal under my eyes. But as well, you can use foundation, but and I'll very leave. little. Yeah. Yeah, you can use foundation, but very little. All right. Well, yeah. um, we have a model that's going to join us in studio for you to demonstrate some looks that we can do very quickly. So, Karibu Sana to the show. You can sit right here. You can scoot this over to you. Yeah. All right. Um, so, how do we start this? Let's start with the... Can we start with the one-minute look? Mm, Would you yes. rather start with a one-minute or a five-minute look? L then you'll we can know start how with five. You can give a try. To the one-minute? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so tell us what you're going to do and then we'll get started with it. Uh, so first, before you do your makeup, you have to cleanse your face right. or your skin. So we'll assume you've just come out of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. So uh, then from there, you... Uh, so we're using one minute, right? Yeah, so in one minute, what what are you hoping to achieve? Is it, would you say in one minute, focus on the brows or focus on the eyelashes or focus on the skin? In one minute, you can do a uh, foundation and you can do eyelashes to set your lashes. That's all. Okay. Those two are okay. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if we have a timer running, but uh, we'll try and see. We'll try and give this like about a minute. Okay. 
so again with the foundation mm -hmm. as you're applying mm -hmm. do you have to use a brush some people like to use their fingers others want to use a sponge foundation in a kwanga kama uchafu i can see so you don't have to use your fingers you better use uh, brushes and that's why it's equal mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so this is foundation all right so i think we're at about maybe 40 seconds okay so so far i mean the foundation is on especially for people who have textured skin or if you have um, trouble with your skin then I guess foundation would be a good option for you yeah sure yeah but if you don't struggle too much with that then <coughs> another thing if you have things like um, blemishes yeah you must have corrector to hide your blemishes pimples and all this okay yeah so when you're doing makeup it's good to have a corrector to you know to hide your blemishes all right for you to look so your one minute is coming up to an end here pretty soon. So you can see already what you I've now done. Now I have like 15 seconds. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, sure. <laughs> but that looks pretty good. Yeah. So you can see. There's definitely a difference. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you feeling like... So far, fresh and ready. <laughs> All right. So so far so good. So far so good. Yeah. Okay. So just within about a minute, I think we're done with a minute or so. Within about a minute, you can at least get your foundation yeah. done. Okay. So let's build on this and now talk about a five-minute makeup look. So we'll say technically we've taken off a minute for the foundation. Sure. Right. So now we have about four minutes to go for this five makeup look in the morning, and hopefully you go. <laughs> you're not waking up that late. <laughs> Hopefully you have at least five minutes to do something to your face. So go ahead. Now what would you focus on now that you have technically um, five minutes? So we've done the face. The foundation. Mm -hmm. So then from there, uh, mascara. Mm -hmm. And uh, after setting my lashes. Like you're actually going to put fake lashes? Uh, it is a must. Or what do you mean by setting your lashes? Using mascara. Okay, mascara. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, and you, do you have to wear eyeliner? Or mm, you can just do mascara? You can just do mascara. It's okay. If you're in hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is but supposed to be a light makeup look. I hope our producer Carol is timing this. <laughs> African timers. All right. Oh, and of course, you're putting powder on the yeah, foundation. Yeah. Very important. To set if you don't do that, tell us what happens. Of course, your foundation. I mean, your skin, your face. You, you will, you will look oily. Kind oily. Of. Yeah. Yeah. So, foundation. I mean, uh, setting powder is good to set your makeup. Set your foundation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think you have about two and a half minutes. Cool. So for someone who, um, say, has oily skin, mm -hmm. um, is foundation a must or can they just kind of do powder when they're like in a rush in the morning? No. You can use foundation and, uh, you know, there is so many types of foundation mm -hmm. So uh, and primer also. Mm -hmm. So you can use, uh, it is primer for oily skin, dry skin, and uh, just normal skin, you know. Okay. So, um, when you're doing makeup, make sure you know your skin texture. All right. Yeah. So, I think you have about a minute to go now. So, we've done foundation. We've set the face with powder. Yeah. Um, put on some mascara. And now, you're just filling in her eyebrows. Sure. All right. Oh, and we even have time for a lipstick. Yeah. Poor guy, I think I've really rushed him, like his hand is shaking. Poor lad, me kurash kidogo. No, really. But this is how we feel in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we feel when you guys call us at Unko api? Tunakuja. All right, so with about 30 seconds to go, I think we actually have a complete face of makeup. I mean, she certainly looks a whole lot different from when we began. Eh, pakana fanya ma ombres. Wow, okay. 
in a minute we're gonna show you the reveal of what she looks like this is makeup that has literally just been done on my couch here at full circle with joyce Good. let me see your time is up wow look at you you guys you guys like that look yeah how are you feeling are you feeling like a whole brand new woman <laughs> you are <laughs> well you look very nice good stuff so, so literally believe... within like five minutes yeah you can actually look put together sure and that should help out a lot of people you know moms students or I don't know, anyone in just a really busy profession who always tends to feel like maybe they just don't have the time to take mm. care of themselves. Mm. At least this gives an option. Mm. So it's not about like doing the most, right? Sure. So of course you can build up the foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't you have want. a reason to say you don't have time to do makeup. Yeah. Yeah, even five minutes you can see you can do some. So one hour is good for you to wake up, to shower, right? To dress up, to dress up and to do makeup. <laughs> one hour one hour yeah, you can <laughs> you can do so many things you know just say una sikia wanaume hapa kwa studio tayari wanasema eh one hour one hour madam okay maximum maximum one hour you know <laughs> <laughs> maximum one hour yeah. okay um so you know do you think this look is appropriate this look is appropriate to wear even to work isn't it sure you can wear it to this work this is a uh, a day makeup uh -huh. because there is so many types of you know looks yeah makeup looks yeah? yeah so she can go interview you know to the office actually she's good okay. to go out so here we didn't do any eyeshadow right See, yeah so highlighting contouring no right. just a small makeup so if look. she wanted to convert this in the for an evening mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. say she's gone to work during the day it's evening time and she has a dinner with the girls mm -hmm. or i don't know her husband <laughs> you have a husband <laughs> Hey, umekunja uso. Say amen. Pokea baraka. Amen. Aya, so maybe she has a dinner in the evening. Mm -hmm. Um what can she do to this look then to sort of, you know, spruce it up for the evening? Uh She must contour her makeup. Okay. Highlighting her makeup, right? Eyeshadow. Okay. Uh fake lashes, eyelashes. Hey. You like those <laughs> glam cheeks. <laughs> uh huh. And um, eyeliner. Okay. Yeah, both Junachini and setting spray. But for someone who doesn't want eyelashes and that whole shebang, um, can they just do, you know, maybe a darker eyeshadow to kind of uh, give it that smoky look? Yeah, she yeah. can do. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe some highlights. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But highlight highlighting your your makeup and controlling your makeup you have to uh, yeah. uh, especially when you are going you know to face or to meet uh, uh so many people okay yeah okay sure for those who have sensitive skin or have have never worn makeup mm -hmm. um what should they be looking out for in as far as what makes a good product and what isn't a good product because the truth is there's a lot of knockoff things on the market today sure how does someone know if this is a good product or not because kuneza story watu wamejaribu kitu alafu imewa ndio so um just go direct to 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 you know to the shop actually those shops ziko kwa malls you know would get like uh, i don't want to mention them yeah. but yeah. zico okay yeah stop buying buying your product here and there so that's what you'd suggest to exactly try and get sure directly yeah. To your source. yeah because uh, they know what they are saying you mm -hmm. know yeah i wanted to ask you when we were doing the foundation there's i think they're known as uh, cr cream to powder cream foundations to. as well uh, um which is it's in a compact mm -hmm. and you'd apply it like as if you're doing a powder so mm -hmm. if you don't want to deal with the mess of a liquid uh, you apply it but it ends up like having a powder finish sure. is that like a is that a good product for say a beginner like what would be a good item for a beginner to start for someone who has never worn makeup and they mm -hmm. just want to start practicing what can they use i don't want to mention those brands yeah but no, yeah no brands but sure. just the product yeah yeah but um there is a foundation we call it two in one okay. you know it has uh, it is you can apply it like foundation okay it's a foundation but it serves to uh, purpose foundation and uh, and and uh, setting powder okay so when you apply that foundation in a cover both okay you'll not sweat right it kind of matte 
Okay. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like a primer and a foundation. Exactly. So you're cutting out a step. Sure. So if that's you in the morning and, you know, even to cut out less time, you can actually start looking out for products that, you know, do compound things. So like the two-in-ones, sure. that would be a good option for you if you're just looking for something for very quickly in and the morning. And of course, it's still a bit expensive, not that cheap. Yeah, yeah. So if but if, to, if it's worth your yeah, time, maybe it's yeah. worth the investment. Yeah. The other thing that we didn't do here was blush. Yeah, we didn't do brush. Is that, is that, I mean, for a daytime look like this with there's no contouring, no highlighting, can we just you throw can on some do, blush? You can do depending with where you're going. Yeah, you can do depending with where you're going. So if you're going, let's say, like um, for a meeting, it's good to contour your, your, your makeup, you know, because contouring, you contour, I mean. Explain what contouring is. Contouring, when you're contouring your makeup, um, it's even as I mentioned, but you're adding definition. Exactly, back exactly. You know, I'm not a tutorial guy. <laughs> I've been in this industry for more than four years, and I don't do <laughs> tutorial stuff. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm so busy here and there. <laughs> so, uh, to explain how to do this kind of stuff, okay. sometimes it's, it is a bit hard. <laughs> but to do it, I do it better. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joseph. Well, thank you for coming and thank you to your model as well. I think some of you have obviously definitely learned something as far as what you can do when you're looking for a quick makeup look in the morning. You can slap on some foundation very quickly or even just if your skin is okay and you don't feel like you need that much coverage, maybe just do some concealer, set it with some powder, uh, comb your eyebrows and throw on some mascara and you'll be good to go. And of course, I think one of the biggest tips is just to have moisturized lips. There's nothing sure. as bad as, even <laughs> if you're not wearing lipstick, there's nothing as bad as makeup or mdome makeup. It's not cute. At least, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We're going to take a short break right now. But when we come back, Helena Ken is going to be joining us in studio. She's going to be telling us her story and sharing her music with us as well. This is Full Circle with Joyce. Stay tuned. Good job, mommy. I can't. How do you tell me that I can't do a makeup look without foundation? I know. I'm a bit disappointed. I don't get let a creative feel. I'm a kind I get to say, dear. Hey, I feel like I'm the one that I'm going to be at. Is it almost well? You know, soon I'm going to be at. I'm going to be at. I'm Stop asking me questions. That is really good. Hello, madam. Hi. Hi, How Joyce. Are you? How are you? Good, good, good. <laughs> Right, 
sound check. Please state your name. Uh, you can count one to ten. Okay. I'm Helena. I'm good. I'm saved. I love Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a bit louder. Are you going to talk at that volume? <coughs> okay. I'm Helena. Yeah. I'm saved. Jesus is. Hi, Mama Helena Ken is here in studio Mwenyewe. Sijamini ni utuimbia yako kakora stu kidogo. Tusikia akapela. How do I begin now? <laughs> <laughs> Mambo ya badilika. Yeah. Tell us about that song. Things are changing. Uh -huh. um, when God gave me this song, I was not in Kenya, I was in UK. Uh -huh attending a meeting in UK and uh, my host took me to a Shimoloa's meeting in Luton. I just attending like any other person. Uh, when the man of God started uh, prophesying, he called me from the congregation. I hesitated, but he insisted, you, 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 you. I was brought on stage and uh, he was annoyed with me. Mm. Then he asked me, why are you becoming stubborn? The message God is giving you is for your nation. He doesn't know me. I was not singing. I was just a congregant. And um, 
okay when I went down that's where I saw the map of Kenya like a screen save on a laptop and it was like mambo and abandlika the words ran across the the, the, the screen mm -hmm. across Kenya ma, Kenya map of Kenya mambo and abandlika and then in English change has come mm -hmm. and I knew kabisa and God is speaking to this nation right yeah and I know things are changing this nation <laughs> well that song became quite an anthem mm -hmm. um, before we even get into the politics but I mean the song was huge yeah. it was such an anthem people really resonated with it it gave people a lot of, a lot of hope mm -hmm. a lot of expectation mm -hmm. um, when you were sitting there in the UK and when you went into studio did you have that conviction that this song would become as big as it did um, <clears throat> sometimes the things of God begin small mm -hmm that when we look at it in flesh we don't see it mm -hmm. but every time i was doing the song like um one of the times when god gives me a song like sita rudi kwavile it was the wordings and the tune yeah. but this one there was no tune mm -hmm. it made me pray a lot it made me pray a lot because every time i think of the message i used to feel like i'm falling something makes you cry you don't know what's happening i didn't know honestly but i will bless the name of the lord because this one of the song you go to studio, the studio men, they all agreed to record it the way it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was no alteration of any wordings or what. Right. So I knew something is happening, but you never know. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we have to talk about this because this song then ended up being used mm -hmm. <laughs> by a group of politicians. Yeah. Like they sort of adopted it mm -hmm. as their own song, as their slogan, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. um, the song was already big, and then the song was used now for a lot of political rallies. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were aware, because mm -hmm. I, I imagine they have to ask for your permission. Okay, I was surprised too. They had never asked. They didn't ask you? They didn't. And you didn't sing in any of their rallies or I anything? did. I sang. I mean, at the beginning, mm -hmm. there was no agreement. Okay. Like even now, uh, when I sang it at uh, this day, they were launching something and they called me just as a singer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a media person comes to me, uh, to me later and then asks, Helena, how do you feel when your song has become a slogan for the party yeah. and it is now their theme? And I'm like, where? <laughs> And it's like, you didn't see this. You know, when you're called to sing, to perform, you never read what is written. And I saw their slogan under the, the, the whatever, it was Mombo and Abandilika. Yeah. But one thing God had spoken to me. This song is, was recorded in 2011, mm -hmm. released in 2012. And the song was there. One day when I was praying, God told me, I will give the song a platform. Yeah. But do you feel, did you feel nervous at all about that? Because, you know, you're a gospel musician, you've written a song really for the church and for mm. the people of God. Mm. Is there at all any sort of nervousness about a song being taken uh, out of yeah. the original context that you intended? Yeah. Because the change you're singing about was coming from God, yet these guys are adopting it as change coming from their Nina, leadership. Okay, or like when the church was against it, so much. The church was? The church. Did you get a lot Bishops of... Bishops calling me, you really? cannot sing on a political ground. And uh, one day I was praying at night and God told me, they are my people. Mm -hmm. And one day a bishop called me and I asked him, how will I ever get such a crowd to preach to? God has given me mm -hmm. a ground in the first. But again, you know, His Excellency, Kalonso Musioka, when he heard this song during lounge, that was 2011, he told me this song is very prophetic. That's just, just what he said. Mm -hmm. This song is very prophetic. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we sang this song, and to him, he felt completely this need for change in this nation. Right. So I was standing on that. Again, I had the assurance of God that you're not singing for political gain because NASA never paid me. Mm. I was not paid for those people. And I used to facilitate my Not going. Not even a little bit. Oh. Sometimes they could facilitate my going. Other times they don't. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I was there to speak to the nation right. that change is here. Okay. When people are opposing, especially spiritual authority, mm -hmm. 
you must feel nervous. Sure. You must be like, am I doing the right thing? Then someday you're called. We are moving. We are on this ground. You say you're not going. And you feel like you're dying. Mm -hmm. I remember one day my husband told me, no, 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 no. Just go. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your songs then, this song you said was written out of just that prophetic meeting mm -hmm. that you were in. Yeah. Do you, where do you feel your music is going to next? What do you, what, what are you sort of hoping for for the future, um, as far as the songs now after Mamboya Badilika? Oh yeah, things have changed. We've gone to our next level. Mm -hmm. As a nation, we are moving. As individuals, we have to keep moving. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the song was used. It ministered to people, and even the other day. I had his, ex his Excellency, the President. What did he say? He used the slogan and said, let me tell you, Mambo in a bandilika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there is something. When, oh, okay, there's one thing I know. When I realized that Esther had, uh, Esther Wahome had another song, Nesema Mambo in a bandilika. Mm -hmm. So when I took the supplied music to the Kasangas, they were like, do you know you've done a song? Uh, which like um, it had been done by Esther Wahome. And I was like, I've never heard it. She, they played the song. Then I called Esther, told my dear, I've done a song using the same wordings like yours. But Esther told me, Helena, we are mature people. And this is what she told me. When you see God repeating a message, there is something, it's a confirmation. That's what he's doing. All right. Yeah. So tell us about your new music right now. Right. Um, mm. I guess it's piggybacking on what you're just talking about because you've actually titled it Next Level. Mm, yeah. So what is the song speaking about? We've gone to our next level. We have to break the camp. We've mm. been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Let us rise up. I began like a, I didn't sit a rude kuavile mm -hmm. and then mambo yana bandilika. Mm -hmm. What next? Mm -hmm. The things we have confessed, that we are not going to be the same again. You cannot be the same again and remain where you are. Mm -hmm. And then again, Mamboy and Abandilika, when things change, what do we do? As individuals, as a nation, we have to move now to our next level. And I believe that's where we are heading. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And... Um, do you, ha what is your process? Because I mean, obviously after attaining such a level of fame, mm -hmm. do you feel pressure right now to sort of keep that going? Oh, like, uh, 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 you know, you know, Joyce, you know, you have to either give people something, you have to be um, ahead, mm -hmm. always ahead. And you know, it is a society which pushes us to that. Right. They demand something extra. You have to be, you have to be. But one thing, I think I have always been a low profile person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like doing my things, okay. moving at my pace. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I do need to give Helena a chance, uh, uh, Helena Ken, <laughs> a chance to come and sing her song. I really just very quickly want to shout out those of you who've SMSed in in response to the question I uh, asked earlier, and then I'll, I'll leave uh, the this platform to her. Um, that's Kim watching us from Tarakaniti. You say you're loving the show, Asante Sana. Um, you said great advice from Alan. Uh, Dismas watching us from Nakuru. We appreciate you as well. Uh, Amo watching from Nairobi. Thank you, those of you. Uh, that's on Face. Uh, sorry, on SMS. Ogwok Linda on Facebook. Shout out to you. Nyawira Wakogi, Zedi, Shiundu, Liam Hesborn, Faith Max, JD, Thais Dites, Esther, Thathi, so many of you have sent in your feedback and your comments. I really do appreciate you. Let's do this again next week. Of course, we'll be back here on Monday for another episode of Full Circle with Joyce as we focus in on personal development. But until then, have yourselves a blessed weekend. And uh, to bring you uh, the song Next Level right here on Full Circle with Joyce, Helena Ken. So until Monday, have a good time. I'll see you soon. Next
Nimepiga tu wa mie Nimezidi kusonga mbele Sinitafuta ulipo ni acha Nimezidi kusonga mbele Sinitafuta ulipo ni acha Asubuhi na mapema wakamchukua mbaki mayo 